Sairam and welcome back to the life processes. Let's see what are life processes, how does it take place and what effects it has on a body. What are the life processes which take place in plants, animals, etc, etc. So if you have a look at this, if you have a look at this figure over here, you see many things which are going up and the flower blooming. And how does it happen? That is because of this life process. Life process is nothing but the processes of the life, all the things which takes place in our body, all things place which takes place in all of our body, it's called as life process. The processes of the life, to sum it all together. Now, if you go on to the next one, you find two things. One which is moving, which is active, which is alive, everything. The next one, which is dumb and just sitting. Well, that's living and non-living. If you see the picture, you come to know about the living and the non-living. And the living thing, the living thing beings, they walk, they talk, they move around, they interact without any external support. You need not give any external support, but in the non-living things, you need to pick them up, you need to give external support so that they move again forward. Now the criteria here is to decide whether something is alive or no. The first thing is movement. As you saw in the previous slide, it moves. The dog, they moves. One dog is just stable. The another dog is just moving. That is one of the criteria. Next, when we see all living things move without any external help. Now, for example, if you see here, there's no external help required here. It's just moving. Here, you need to pick them up and just put it. Then it moves. Now, the molecular movement is cell tissues is also important criteria for living things. For example, in the living things, all the molecular processes which takes place in a body, that's because everything is living. And the moment you're dead, all the things just get arrested. Now let's see the types of the life processes. So there are these types of the life processes. Here, first thing is the nutrition and second is the respiration. Now what is this nutrition? It is the process of taking food by the organism and utilizing it for its body process. For example, you take this chapati, you take this fruits, you take this chapati and you take some bhaji, you take, you, you take rice, you take you know, sambar and rasa, everything, that's a type of nutrition. Where you take those and then it is well suited for the process to go over. Now, you take this, the organism takes in food and it is utilized completely by the body. It is taken, it is utilized and then it is given out. Another one is the respiration. Okay, when you respire, what happens is, all the food which is burned, that's burned in cells with the help of oxygen and it is, it releases energy. The food you take in, that takes, that is burned down by this oxygen and that releases the energy and that is the process of respiration. Why? Can you think what is breathing and respiration? Hmm. Breathing is completely different from respiration. Breathing is taking just the air and just letting out, that's breathing. This is breathing, but when you respire, you take the things, it's broken down and then it goes to all the cells of the body and the energy is liberated back. That is respiration. And now coming to the transportation, as the word indicates the transportation, we have transportation, we have transportation materials like you have this bus car, everything which transports us from one place to the another place. Likewise. We have something called as a transportation here, which is necessary for the building blocks of the life. It is necessary for all of us. And how does it done? This food, oxygen, water, waste products are carried from one part of the body to another part of the body. That itself is called transportation in case of this living beings. Now you have this excretion. Well, anything that is taken has to go throughout through. So excretion is a process by waste products are removed from out from the body totally. So it's something like this. You take the food, it is utilized completely into the body. The food goes to the molecules, it goes to all the cells of the body 
and then it is adjusted out through the anus. So this is how the process takes place. And if you see, you have this lungs over here, how does circulation takes place and you have the excretory system over here. Okay. And if you see, you have the digestive system over here and the respiratory apparatus where it shows how it respires. Now, nutrition. Now, coming back to this nutrition in detail. So, that's the process where you take food by the organism and it is utilized for building the body, building blocks of the body. And then you go for the growth, repair, damage parts of the body to give out the energy. So, this is the nutrition. So they say that you have should have a proper nutrition. You need to have proper nutrition. So what is that? You take everything in correct quantities. You take the carbohydrates, you take proteins, you take vitamin in the apt quantities which gives you correct amount of nutrition so that the body responds properly so that the body, you know, have the correct amount of energy to all parts of the body. Now, this life on this earth depends on this carbon molecules. Everything is consisting of this carbon molecules. The food you eat, the things around us, is everything around based on this carbon. So the outside raw materials, the living organisms, they have this food, water and air. That is consisting of the carbon. When you intake it, it is taken, it is assimilated, digested, assimilated, sends out to all the parts of the cell and then it is utilized by the body. Now you have this modes of nutrition. As you have the modes of transportation, modes of everything, we have this modes of nutrition which come well, play a very important role in one's process. Now you have this autotropic nutrition. The name itself suggests it is auto, autotrophic. Autotrophic means they prepare their own food themselves. They don't depend on any others. So you have this best example is the green plants. In the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, they prepare their own food. They don't need to depend on others. So they have this, whenever there is sunlight, there is chlorophyll present in the green plants, there is sunlight, they start preparing their own food. They need not depend on others. Now that is in case of autotropic nutrition where it is auto. They prepare themselves their own food. Now you have this heterotropic nutrition. So this is a type of nutrition which organisms get their food from the directly or indirectly from plants or from animals. They depend on other things. That is heterotrophic where they get their food from other sources. For example, we human beings get us food from plants, animals, etc, etc. And so many other things. So we depend on them for our food. Have you ever heard that any human being preparing their own food in their own body? No, it's not possible. So we come under the heterotrophic mode of nutrition. And you have the tight types of heterotropic. Even in the heterotropic, it has been segregated in the type of nutrition. So we have the three main types. First one is the saprophytic, parasitic, and holozoic. Now let's see in detail what is the saprophytic, what is this parasitic, and what is this holozoic. So if you see the saprophytic mode of nutrition, they get their food from the dead and decaying organisms. And they break down the food material outside the body and it up they absorb them. Example, you have this mushroom, the bread mold, the yeast, and some bacteria. So you can have the you have a look. Here is a mushroom. Okay, then you have this bread mold which is not here, and we have this amoeba also. So imagine what happens is the first example for the saprophytic nutrition is you keep some bread or chapati, you know, for a few days outside. And after some days, what do you find on it? After some days, you find this Aspergillus niger which is growing on that. Aspergillus niger is nothing but the fungus which grows on top of that. And then that is the saprophytic mode of nutrition where they get their organism from the dead and decaying organisms where it is dead, it is decaying. So it decays, it breaks down into more and more simpler substances. And then you have this parasitic mode of organisms. Here, there it was dead and decaying. But here in the parasitic mode of nutrition, they get their food from the living organisms, the host which are present itself there. The best example is the cascata in case of plants. Okay, orchids and ticks. Now the sticks, leaves, leeches, roundworms, tapeworms, plasmodium in case of this human. You must have heard 
what happens you go to a doctor with a stomach ache or something and the doctor tells hey you have some stomach ache there are some worms in your stomach now what does this worms mean there are some tapeworms or other types of worms and which are present in our stomach which are eating all the nutrition which we have that comes under the parasitic nutrition and one more example is the lice which will be present in some of the people so what happen the lice feeds on the blood on the scalp and it feeds on that example is lice so now you you see that we are live we are the host and they take their mode of nutrition from us so that is the example for the parasitic nutrition and then you have this holozoic nutrition okay they take their food directly and then digest and absorb it for that we have this amoeba okay parmesium eggs etc what they do they take it directly they take it they grab it and that goes inside assimilate and digest so that is one more and now coming to the detail in nutrition plants one of the thing is photosynthesis now before going to photosynthesis how do all the plants and all the things get their color can you think of it yes it is because of a pigment called chlorophyll chlorophyll is a green pigment which is present in the plants and that gives a green color to the plants likewise we have got many other pigments which give many various colors to the plants so here what happens what is this photosynthesis they prepare their food in the presence of carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight the photosynthesis takes place only in case of the sunlight and then the food is prepared with carbohydrate which is stored inside the starch in the form of starch the food is prepared in this form it's stored in form of starch so oxygen is released from this process so if you have a look at this equation of the photosynthesis so you have this carbon dioxide plus water in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll you have this starch which is glucose present here and then you have this water and oxygen okay this is a carbohydrate which is present here and then how was the photosynthesis the photosynthesis takes place in basically in this steps the absorption of light energy by chlorophyll the light gets absorbed by the chlorophyll and then conversion of light energy into chemical energy how does it happen by splitting up of the water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen and the third one is reduction of carbon dioxide to by hydrogen to form this carbohydrates now if you see this is a process in case of the sunlight when sunlight is present it goes here okay they start preparing their own food in the presence of carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide is taken the oxygen is given out okay the water is also here the water is given out and also the starch it is stored in the form of the starch so this is how the photosynthesis takes place if you break this photo and synthesis photo is nothing but light synthesis is preparation so photosynthesis is nothing but preparation of the food by this plant in presence of the sunlight and then coming back to this chlorophyll this chlorophyll is a very very important aspect in the plants to prepare this foods so if you see this green pigment which is present in the leaves if you take a cross section under a microscope you can see the cells containing this green dot structure is called chloroplast you can see the chloroplast here which contain this chlorophyll okay so i explained you the process how it happens so basically what happens is you have this low water content when there's low water content here the guard cells open and the carbon dioxide once they go out so that takes process and the process is out and you have this high water content which comes here when it comes then it opens out and through the stomata when it's open that what low water content that goes off and here you have this things so this is an enlarged view of that you have the cellulose wall you have cellulose wall here and the cell membrane here and there's vacuole present here the nucleus is here okay and you enlarge this is a chloroplast which contains the chlorophyll and this is a cytoplasm now this is the enlarged view of the chloroplast so this outer membrane which is here that protects us and the, there's the inner membrane space and the inner membrane and you have this the aqueous fluid which is a stroma which consists with just all these things together and then you have this granum okay you enlarge this you have this stylocard which are small small things all right and you have this the things which connect here as called as lamella and then you have this lumen inside the thylakoid you have this lumen so 
This is what how it takes place. And coming back to the stomata, this is a, this plays an important role because you know this guard cells in the stomata open up and then close. That's how this transpiration takes place. Okay, and then you have this. How does it takes place in stomata? What are the stomata? What does the stomata consist of? This consists of this pores which is present in the leaves. Okay, which helps in the exchange of gases. These gases, carbon dioxide is taken and the oxygen is given out. All right, and then each stoma is a pair of guard cells. Which contains, which controls this opening and the closing of the stomatal pore. Whenever it is necessary, it opens and closes. It it controls. It need not be like it is always open or always closed. It controls this opening and closing. And then when the water enters the guard cells, it swells up. Okay, and the pore opens when the guard loses water. Once the guard got, again it shrinks back. Now we can see here the guard cell over here. You can see the surface view. It's open, okay, and the, it consists of this epidermal cell. And here you have the thickened inner guard cell, okay, and the nucleus which provides energy. And you have the stoma over here. You have this chloroplast present here. And this is a cross section view. If you open it, you have the stoma present here and the epidermal cells. Now here the stoma tub. It's an enlarged version of the stoma tub. Where you can see the high water content coming out, and then when there's a low carbon dioxide goes inside here, and you have this opening and allowing the carbon dioxide gets in and the oxygen comes out. So you see this stomata, okay? This is basically the guard cells over here. So how this this guard cells looks like this? You have this chloroplast which are present over here, okay? This chloroplast helps in closing and opening, and here you have this nucleus. All right, you can see the open one. Now this is when The you know all the things carbon dioxide everything enters inside what enters inside and then this is a closed one whether it's given out what is given out and this the starch is stored inside okay and then coming back there is an experiment to show how this chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis it is very simple you can always do it you take a leaf okay and you put it into this water take this boil into the boil water boil it completely okay. When you boil it completely, what happens here? It it loses off some of the things, and then you take this alcohol and water, and then leaf is heated in alcohol. Okay, now the chlorophyll. Why is it heated in alcohol? Because the chlorophyll contains that is you know that removes of the chlorophyll. Now you need to take care when you are heating it because alcohol is present here. It might it is highly inflammable, so it might catch fire. So you have to be careful. When you're doing this, and then also here, once it is heated, the leaf goes pale. Okay, all this chlorophyll has gone away. Now coming back to the third year, when it is reheated into the water, what happened? It has to be softened. So it re when it is reheated into the water, it gets softened. Now here, the presence of starch shows the photosynthesis has taken place. How you take a spotting tray and then you put this leaf dust and treat it with iodine. When you treat it with iodine, so here it turns blue black in color if the starch is present. Now the presence of starch shows that the photosynthesis has taken place. So this is how the photosynthesis takes place. Now you can see here a photo of this where the starch exists. You can see it, the color has changed. That is how the starch, you know, it proves that the starch exists. So now, now coming back to this nutrition in um, in the animals, you have this. Amoeba, which will you know, which will take place here, which grabs up the things and which grabs up the things, and then it generally goes apart, and then comes here, and you know, it takes up all the water was required, okay, and it grabs the things. It it is called as a pseudopodia, which grabs the things and the food vacuole, and then it digests, and then here it comes back. To the nutrition, and that's how as um, that's the brief um, things for the nutrition elements. We'll discuss it into the next video. Thank you.